So the next types of transformations to look at are enlargements and structures. Um, so this first example gives us a matrix um, M, so it's 2, 0, 0, 2. And first thing it asks us to do is find the image of a triangle with vertices um, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 2. So to do that, we're going to take the matrix M, multiply by each of these points in turn. You can put them together in a big matrix or do them individually, it's fine. And so if you do 2, 0 times the first column, you'll get 2. 2, 0 times the second column, you'll also get 2. 2, 0 times the third column, you should form. Then 0, 2 times each of these columns will times each of these bottom um, values by 2. So I'll get 2, 4, 4 for my new coordinates. Plotting these on here, so T is at 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2. And the image of T is at 2, 2, 2, 4. Notice what's happened here. It kind of looks like there's been a translation, um, but what's actually happened is um, these, this triangle has been enlarged out from the origin. Like along these two lines, so these points have moved out. So this um, matrix M corresponds to an enlargement scale factor 2 from the origin. So all the side lengths have been doubled. Example 2 is very similar, but notice the difference is that we've got a 3 in the top left instead of a 2. So doing exactly the same thing as before, I'm going to take this matrix 3, 0, 0, 2 and times it by each of these points to get the image. This 3, 0 will times all of the top ones by 3. This 0, 2 will times all of the bottom ones by 2. So we can now plot T again. And then the image of T this time is at 3, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 4. This time this isn't an enlargement because we've got different scale factors happening in the x direction and the y direction. This is a combination of two stretches. This is the difference between a stretch and an enlargement. An enlargement is um, the same in all directions, whereas stretches are just in a single direction. So we can describe this as a stretch scale vector three parallel to the x-axis. Uh, because the x values have been tripled, and this is also a stretch scale factor 2 parallel to the y axis, as the y coordinates have been doubled. This is summarized in this box here. So, in general, if you've got a matrix with zeros in the top right and the bottom left, uh, numbers in the other and the leading diagonal, then this will be a combination of stretches. If those values A and B are the same, this is an enlargement. And for an enlargement, um, the pack says that X and Y axis are invariant lines. Actually, all lines through the origin are invariant lines. So, and um, all lines of the form Y equals M. The origin is the only invariant point for an enlargement. All of the points will get changed from that. For stretches, <coughs> so for a stretch parallel to the x-axis, um, the bottom right one will be 1 and the top left will be some number. Um, invariant points will be all of the points on the y-axis won't change for a stretch parallel to the x-axis. Invariant lines are any horizontal lines, so lines parallel to the x-axis. And also the y-axis is a line of invariant points, so that's an invariant line too. Parallel to the y-axis, it's the other way around for the matrix. Um, the points on the x-axis this time won't get changed by a stretch in the y-direction. And lines parallel to the y-axis, so that's vertical lines, will be invariant lines, and the x-axis itself. What's really important from this box is this sentence here. It's really important to learn this. So for any linear transformation, not just stretches and enlargement, so for any combination of linear transformations, 
Um, if you work out the determinant of your transformation matrix, that will represent the area scale factor. If you need the length scale factor, you'll have to square root. Um, but this represents the area scale factor. It's entirely possible for you to get negative determinants, which is fine. It just means that your shape has also been reflected as well as stretched and enlarged. And All right, and so this one's up there. And so two stretches, so stretch scale factor two parallel to the x-axis, so stretch scale factor four parallel to the y-axis. Um, it tells you a triangle has those vertices actually for the area. You do a little sketch, just a right angle triangle, so you can just do half of this and, like, and you get three. You work out the determinant of this, you just get eight, so it's two times four, and so the area of the image of T. It's just uh, the scale area scale factor is eight just times the five, so you should get to. There is a question for you over the page. I'm going to skip that and uh, if we've got time at the end, we'll go back to that. So here it says we've got three transformations. Um, these questions get quite confusing with what they call different letters. So they'll say transformations are one letter and then they're represented by the matrices. Another letter, which always makes it a bit weird. Um, but anyway, so we've got three transformations here. So we've got a stretch in the x direction, scale factor three. We've got an anti clockwise rotation, and it's degrees at the origin. And we've got a uh, transformation which combines these two. So we're going to do T1 first, and then we're going to do T2. The stretch in the x direction, scale factor three, we've just done. So that will be the matrix 3, 0, 0, 1. Just write that one down. Anti-clockwise rotation at 90 degrees about the origin. We could work this out from our vectors A and B, or you could use the formula on the formula sheet. You could just substitute in 90 for that, and that will work as well. Let's use our vectors A and B. So A is here, and B is here. <coughs> um, rotating 90 degrees about the origin, so A goes up to its image up here, B goes down to its image down here. So A being at one zero has now gone to zero one. So the first column in my matrix is zero one. B originally being at zero one has now gone to minus one zero. So that will be the second column in my matrix. So I'll do then T three or M three is um Transformation T1 followed by T2. When it comes to combining these matrices together, remember what you're usually doing these two. You're usually doing these to a point. Okay, so I'm just going to put in a generic X y just for demonstration purposes. So this is the point that we're transforming. We're doing T1 first, which is represented by M1. So I'm doing 3, 0, 0, 1 to this point first. So multiply that on it over to the left. And then I'm doing T2 to it, so then I'm multiplying it by M2. So it goes this way around. I do M1 first, then M2. So M1 goes on the right and M2 on the left. Kind of working inwards, uh, inside out from the point that you multiply it by. Why did it go on the left? I wouldn't be able to multiply it if it was on the right. So if it was on the right, you do the, col the row times the column. There's only one in the row. You don't actually need this x, y, this is just for me demonstrating it. But that's what I'm talking about. It's really important you getting these the right way around. It's a little bit weird because usually we work left to right and you'd expect to put m1 first and then m2. But it's not, it's like function notation, it's like working inside out. So you're doing the point times m1 first and then you times it by m2. Do this matrix multiplication to come up with m3. So first row times first column ends up with zero. First row times second column gives you minus one. And second row times first column gives you three. And finally, second row times second column gives you another zero. This combines these two transformations. Okay. 
And what it says in this box here is what we've just done. So if you've got a, a two matrices multiplied together to the matrix, so the matrix represented by PQ means that we do Q first and then we do P. So we do the transformation represented by Q and then the transformation represented by P. Have we got this question for you underneath here? If you want to flip back in your pack to get the matrices for those, you can do, or you can work them out from scratch. So you're doing the you do the rotation first and then you do the reflection. So you do the rotation matrix on the right and then you do the um, reflection matrix on the left. You get this. If that corresponds to reflection the x-axis, you could check it by doing it to your points one zero one zero one. Right, so we've got three vertices of the triangle here. We've got um, two reflect two um, transformations that happen to it. So we've got a rotation 90 degrees and clockwise about the origin, and then we've got a reflection in the line y equals x and um, Facebook. Which is the so um, it wants us to sketch these on separate diagrams. So first one, we've got point one zero zero one, and we've got two zero dots. So make sure you level up which point is which. So we're trying to go A, B, C, one. We're rotating this 90 degrees clockwise about the origin. So B is going to go down to here now. B dash, that's at minus one, zero. A is going to go up here now. A dash is at zero one, and C is going to go up here now. So C dash is at zero two. This is my rotated, my triangle rotated next degree and clockwise on the origin. We're then going to reflect this in the line y equals x. That's y equals x. So a is at zero one will now go back <coughs> to where it originally was. Do that again. A is at one zero. C is going to go back to be at two zero. I'm going to reflect these down. And B is going to go down onto the negative y axis. So where it was at minus one zero, right now it's going to go to zero minus one. A. All right, so sketch all of these here. So it wants us to find the matrix P. It says such that PT equals T dash, basically this is the matrix representing um, rotation 90 degrees and the of the origin, uh, and the matrix Q that takes this image onto here, so this one is the one that represents a reflection in the line Y. So rotation, um, we've taken 1, 0 and put, uh, moved it on to um, 0, 1. And we've taken zero one and moved it onto minus one zero. So this is the one that we've been doing the last few questions. You can just write it down. So this is P. Q. Uh, so reflection in line y equals x. If we um, did it to the point one zero, that would go to zero one. And vice versa, if we did it to zero, one, that will go to one, zero down here. So 
So you get zero, one, one, zero. <coughs> and then for C by forming a suitable matrix, first find the matrix that takes the original triangle to the final triangle, basically combines these together. Okay. So we're doing the matrix P first and then the matrix Q. That means that R equals P first and then Q. So P goes on the right and Q on the left. 0, 1, 1, 0 times by 1 times 1, 0. And if we do this matrix multiplication, so first row times the first column, 2, 1. First row times the second column gives you 0. Second row times the first column also gives you 0, and then you get minus. You can do this from the matrix or from the diagrams that you've drawn. So describe the single geometrical transformation represented by I. You can see our blue triangle has then been reflected in the X axis. You get the green triangle. Uh, a reflection in the X axis. And then it wants us to think about it going the other way around. So if we reflect in the line y equals x and then rotate it 90 degrees on to compromise, what will happen? So I'm going to put these, I'm going to multiply these matrices the other way around. So instead of doing QP, I'm going to do PQ. Let's do this multiplication. So 0 minus 1 times 0, 1 equals minus 1. One which is very similar matrix, except for minus and minus. Uh, you might know what this is by looking at it, or you might not guess what it is. Um, but what I would do is I'd do these to the two points 1, 0, and 0, 1, and see what happens. So do it to our point A, 1, 0. Uh, takes us to minus one, zero. A dash is here. And if I do zero, one, <coughs> see what happens there. So I get zero, one. So that means B and B dash don't move the same, same place. And so you can see what this is. This is a reflection in the work, which is what you probably would have guessed. It's quite often multiple linear transformations can combine together, together to give a single other linear transformation. All okay so far? Right, last example here. So let's take a it gives us a matrix here which it says represents two transformations. So represents an enlargement of scale factor k, followed by a rotation through any angle and throughout the origin. Not any angle, just through angle theta. It wants us to work out what k and theta are for this. There's different ways of approaching this, but I'm going to write down the matrices that I know for this. So I know that an enlargement scale factor k is represented by k0, 0, 0, k. And I know that a rotation anticlockwise around the origin is on the formula sheet. Okay. If I know this matrix M is this, well, I could do it in terms of K and theta. So I do the enlargement first, and then I times by the rotation. <coughs> I can combine these together, so I'll get k cos theta minus k sin theta, k sin theta, k cos theta. So it's my generic matrix M, which is an enlargement scale factor k, followed by a rotation.
What I'm going to do is I'm going to set some of these equal to the elements in M, and then we'll get some sort of basic questions. So from my leading diagonal, I know that K cos theta is equal to minus 2 root 2. And from my other diagonal, I know that minus K times theta is equal to minus 2 root 2, or K times theta is equal to 2 root 2. Some of these equations here for k and theta, these look like you know when you do r cos theta plus alpha in single maths, you can solve it like those. Um, so I'm gonna, um, my k is like r, but I know that r squared or k squared in this case is equal to this squared plus this squared. And so if you work out k, k is going to be positive. Um, so you get k squared is 16, so k is equal to 4. You could sub that back in and work out theta. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide these. If I do equation 2 divided by equation 1, I get k sine of theta. Okay, cos theta. 2 root 2 over minus 1. <coughs> K's cancel out. The left hand side ends up being tan theta and it equals minus 1. Which, if you solve in your calculator, I believe will give you 1, 3, 5, 3. <coughs> There are other ways of doing this, so the other way of doing it would be to think about, um, so the enlargement scale factor, you could work out the determinant of this to get the area scale factor and then square root it to get the length scale factor. So the determinant of this is 16 and if you square root it, you get 4, which is... Okay, so 